Hello, Paradise Panther artists. My name is Mrs. Telfer, and I'm excited to be with you today to tell you about our next master artist, Pablo Picasso. Picasso was a famous Spanish painter from the 20th century. He experimented with many different styles of artwork, but he became very well known for his great contributions to the style of Cubism. He would break a figure apart and then reposition it in an abstract way. So let's take a look at Picasso's long career as an artist. Here we go. Today, let's pretend that you have a father who is a famous artist. He wants to paint your portrait, so you pose for him in his studio. He is going to paint you twice. In the first portrait, you will be sitting in a chair wearing a clown costume. The second one also has you sitting in a chair, but this time you will be holding an orange, which is your favorite fruit. Look at these two paintings. I am surprised because the same artist painted both of them. However, the styles are very different from each other. The left portrait is a realistic looking painting of our artist's son, Paul. But in the right portrait, he painted his daughter, Paloma, in an abstract style which means it does not look real, and it does not look like a photograph. The styles are different because he kept on changing the way he painted. He was never content to stay with what was successful. His painting styles would become popular, and other artists would begin to copy him. Then he would be off trying something completely new. That is one reason why he is one of the most famous artists of the 1900s. Let's meet today's master artist and find out how and why his work changed. Let me introduce Pablo Picasso. He was born in Spain, but lived in France most of his life. He was introduced to art very early because his father was a painter and an art teacher. He learned to draw before he could even walk or talk. He was so good at drawing that he entered an art school at the age of 13. Most of the other students were over 20 years old, but young Picasso was more talented. The directors allowed young Picasso to attend after seeing samples of his excellent work, like the painting of the girl in the red dress. He showed great talent and completed the art course in record time. Picasso had two sides to him that we can't see in this self-portrait. One side was fun-loving and silly but he had many unhappy times in his life too. Here, he is showing us his serious, sad side. After he left art school, he had some hard years as an artist. He was unknown, he was hungry, and he was lonely. The paintings he did during this time showed how he felt. He was unhappy. Using a quiet hand, raise your hand if you have ever heard the expression, feeling blue. What does it mean to feel blue? Raise your hand and your teacher will call on you. Thank you, you can put your hands down now. To feel blue, it means you're feeling sad. When Picasso painted this, he was feeling lonely, poor, and depressed. When Picasso arrived in Paris, he spent some unhappy years there as a struggling young artist. Those feelings definitely show in this painting. This time in his life is called his blue period. 
Blue is a cool color. During the blue period, Picasso used a lot of darker shades of blue. He would have mixed black with his blue paint to get this palette. Look closely at the man in the painting. We can see that he is blind. Look at how his fingers nervously reach out for the picture on the table. Picasso emphasized the sense of touch, which was so important to a blind person. The title of this painting is The Blind Man's Meal. Picasso had a real fear of losing his own eyesight, even though there was nothing wrong with him on which to base this fear. During his blue period, Picasso always painted in blue colors, and all the people appeared very sad to match his own mood. He also showed the people being very tall and thin, as in the old guitarist, who was also blind. Picasso changed the way they really looked to make them appear even more sad and lonely. Give me a thumbs up without using your voice, if the colors here are getting warmer. Or give me a thumbs down without using your voice, if the colors seem to be getting cooler in this painting. Yes, the colors are getting warmer here. You may put your hands down now. Picasso started to use warm colors as his own life became happier. There is an expression that says, life is rosy. Things are generally good when life is rosy. Picasso was beginning to gain notice as an artist, which made it possible to sell some of his paintings, so he wasn't so poor. Picasso's rose period followed his blue period. Picasso started to use somewhat happier, lighter, warmer colors like you see here. We see the colors of orange, rose, pink, red, and brown in this painting. Picasso still used blue colors, but he made the painting happier looking by adding warm colors like rose. Without using your voice, raise your hand if you have ever been to the circus. I bet there are hands up around your classroom right now. Thank you, you can put your hands down. Picasso loved the circus, just like many of you might. He became friends with some of the circus performers and traveled around with them as they went from town to town doing their circus shows. Most of the Rose period paintings were of circus people. This painting shows a circus family wearing their costumes. When you go to a circus, it can make you feel excited and happy. But Picasso did not show the circus family in that way. He didn't show them performing. Maybe he wanted to show that circus life was not always happy and exciting behind the scenes when they weren't performing. And guess what? The tall, serious man on the left in this painting is Picasso's self-portrait. I wonder if he secretly wished he was a circus performer too. These are rose period paintings. We can tell because he used warm colors, like in the circus costumes. The mother and son and the two brothers are looking a little bit tired after their acrobatic performance in the circus. I think you will be surprised at how Picasso changes in this next painting. Well, this was a surprise. 
Picasso changed his style of art completely in this painting. But I'm wondering, why does it look so strange? Imagine we are looking at these musicians from the front. Then we walk all around and see them from the back, the sides, the top, and the bottom. Picasso took all those possible views and combined them in one composition. This style of showing things from all different views is called cubism. It's named after the cube. Picasso didn't paint his musicians in regular clothes. He painted them in circus clown outfits. Look closely at the painting. And without using your voice, show me your answers by holding up the correct number of fingers. Here we go. Show me with your fingers how many musical instruments can you find. Yes, we can see three musical instruments. One, two, and three. Now, show me with your fingers how many music books are there. Yes, we can see one music book. And last, how many violins can you find? Yes, there is only one violin right here. That's very good. Now, let's look closely at these three instruments. We see a violin, a horn, and a keyboard. Picasso mixed up all those shapes and lines to make it like a puzzle we have to put together. Let's solve the puzzle with one more search. We can find the side view of the clown's face somewhere other than on his face. Look closely. It is on the clown's chest and it is part of the instrument right here. Now that is unexpected. This is also a cubist painting. Picasso loved music, and musical instruments can be found in many of his paintings. The musical instruments you see here are a white and red guitar and a yellow and red mandolin right here. Another feature of cubism is showing all sides of objects. And if you look carefully at the yellow mandolin, you'll be able to see the top, the side, and the bottom view of the instrument right here. Let's turn our attention to the bright colors Picasso used. He keeps our eyes exploring the painting by repeating the design and colors. Notice the blues in the sky. Picasso also repeated the same blue on the wall right here and right here, under the table right here, and with the instruments right here and right here. Here we also see patterns. A pattern is a line, shape, or color that repeats. We can see where he repeated the checkered design above the window on the floor, and under the table. Picasso was talented at making our eyes explore every detail. Now, I want you to imagine asking Picasso to paint your portrait. 
And when you see it, surprise, it's done in a cubist style. Now that would be unexpected. I'm wondering how this woman would feel about her portrait. As you can see, Picasso used solid colors, angles, and shapes rather than realistic details of the woman. Let's see how he was able to show more than one view of a face in the same painting. Go ahead and take a look at the left side of the woman's face, the one right here, that shows her hand. This is a front view of her face, and that eye is looking forward. Now, look at the right side of her face, right here. This is a side view of her face. Another word for the side view is called profile. Notice that the eye, nose, and mouth are turned sideways in the profile. Picasso took a trip to Italy and saw many beautiful museum sculptures that were made long ago. These sculptures were made of marble, which is a very hard stone. It comes in many colors, but the sculptures Picasso saw were mostly in white marble. Some of these sculptures are so old that only parts of them remain. This head is all that is left of a sculpture that was made more than 2,000 years ago. This kind of art, made by the ancient Greeks and Romans, is called classical art. Picasso loved the smooth, very rounded shapes of these sculptures. When he went back to France, he was inspired to recreate what he saw. Instead of sculpting marble, as the artists of long ago had done, he did paintings of very smooth, rounded people that look like they had been carved out of marble. He used warm, rich colors and sometimes dressed the people in the same clothing and hairstyles that he saw on the marble statues in the museums. Picasso's new way of painting was called the classical period, just like the ancient art he had seen. Great job today, learning about the many different styles and periods of art from our master artist, Pablo Picasso. I wonder if you have a favorite period or piece of artwork from Picasso. Well, coming up in your art activity, you will get to dive into the world of the three musicians and create a cubist composition using chalk staining. Have a great day, Paradise Panther artists, and I will see you next time.